meet a couple friends, gonna grab a drink with them beforehand, and then go see that. Well, we're movie. gonna grab dinner. Well, we're eating. <laughs> we're drinking. I'm not drinking. I'm drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to session 28 of the Little Wolf Knits podcast. I am Brianna and I am the dyer designer human behind the Little Wolf Knits. And we are back just one week later, technically five days later than our last podcast. And I am so glad to be here with you today on this cold. It's not, I wouldn't say it's gloomy out, but it doesn't feel as like bright as last time we chatted when it was snowing and cozy. The snow is melting, it's a little gray, the sun is not out, but we are here and we have made it and I'm so excited to be here with you. I already <laughs> said that, but it's true. Um, I It has only been five days, but it feels like I've done a decent amount of work this week on projects, which is, getting me pretty excited. I was gonna say hopefully we won't be here too long, but you never know with these. So let's just jump in. Before we get started, let's talk about what I'm wearing. I think I'm changing my order of this podcast every single time and I don't really care. Um, this is my newest design. It is coming out in February. It's already in testing with my testers, a small testing group from um, the Wolf Pack this time around, which is really cool. And this is my D Street sweater. Um, you would have seen me working on this. I think it has all these really cool, see? I don't, I don't know if you can see it. There you go. <laughs> these are really cool distressed details on the arm, um, on the side. Uh, and this is in my molasses colorway on my Opti base. And it is just so cozy and comfy. It has a similar fit to the second half sweatshirt. I think this has like seven inches of positive ease. No. Math, nine inches of positive ease, something like that. Um, and it is really cozy, a nice high neck, which is perfect for days like these. Um, and I think this will bring us into our admin <laughs> section, yarny things, important updates, because it is reminding me of something very important that I have forgotten to talk about for the last like three sessions. <music> So admin, things happening in the shop. We already have closed out our January club listings because they were being dyed up. By the time you're watching this, probably as we're speaking, I will be dying it up later this week. So if you missed out on those, I'm so sorry. But February clubs will be coming very soon and in February, we'll have some exciting things coming for later in the year, like our July boxes, but I'll talk about those a little bit more next time because next time will be the first podcast of February, technically, by the time it goes live. So those are closed. Other things happening in the shop. Um, I think we're gonna do a birthday sale. I will share all of the details with my newsletter subscribers first. So if you're not on my newsletter, make sure you head over to my website or Instagram and subscribe to my newsletter. That's where you'll find out about all the details about the sale for the shop that will happen probably next week, but by the time this one goes live, this next one goes live in the beginning of February. So definitely keep an eye out for those. And other things that have happened, my Jamie Joggers, are officially live. It was such an amazing release. Thank you all so much. Um, it seems like everyone really loved them and the pockets on those because pockets. How how can you go wrong with pockets, right? Um, so super grateful for that. And now the most important thing that I've been forgetting to talk about every single week is the cookie jar 
pre-order collection. It is coming back um, last June. It was definitely last June because it was the week of my wedding. Uh, the Cookie Jar Collection launched and it did so well. It was so, so fun and exciting to see all of the things that you loved from the Cookie Jar Collection. And I think there were a lot of folks, because it was the middle of the summer, who said, I love this colorway. I just don't know that I would use it right now. It feels like a wintry or a fall colorway. So we decided to bring the cookie jar collection back for a relaunch, a 2.0, and I am so, so excited. I think I've used almost every colorway in the collection except three. I think there were like 16 colorways and I've used all but three, but the plan is actually to get those on the needles and use them pretty soon, so. That'd be kind of cool if I could have a sample in every single colorway for the cookie jar collection. But if you have made something with a cookie jar colorway and you haven't already, make sure you post and tag me because I love seeing things that y'all finish using my yarn. It makes me so happy and so excited and gives me actually a lot of inspiration, not just for designs, but also colorways that I want to use for other projects that I knit. So that whole collection will be coming back February 5th, which is a Monday at 12.30 p.m. So hopefully y'all can grab something on your lunchtime hour if you would like. And what else do I have to say about that? I guess I'll share all the details. So we're gonna have all of the colorways back. We will have all of the charms coming back as options in the shop. And we're gonna have some goodies from a friend, a group of friends really, who are doing some collaborative bags that coordinate with some of our cookie colorways. And I am so, so excited to show all of those off to you next week. So definitely stick around, make sure you're signed up for my newsletter and check out next week's session, which will be session 29, it's 28. I think that's what I said. So don't go too far, but I think that is all the admin stuff for now. Let's jump into what I finished because we have some finished objects today. First things first, where do we start? Okay, let's start here. Um, I don't have these on blockers because they're not mine and they're not Michael's and the blockers that I have are an adult small and an adult large. And this I would say is like an adult medium and I don't want blockers for those. And I don't want to stretch them out. Um, I usually do, honestly, when I, once I've blocked them, I put them on the smaller blocker so they don't stretch out, but they just give it a little bit of shape. But I've been waiting to block both of these FOs because I wanted them to be dry and not wet when I showed them to you. But you saw one of these done last week this is my Cozy Knitter 24 Stripe 2023 Advent Sock. And you saw one last week with coordinating bare tonal for heels, toes, and cuffs. And now you get to see the other one. And we have a pair of socks. Cool. Um, I actually know which one is the second one because there's a little, it's not a mistake, it's just something I can see um, where the yarn caught while I was knitting on the heel during the comedy show last week that I'll talk about a little bit later. But they are finished, ends are woven in. I just don't trim them until after I block them and they are gonna go in the blocking water right after this recording. So excited, FO number one. And I will set these aside for a gift for next year, which is always nice to know one gift down and I may or may not be working on another one. But those are done. FO number one, super excited. FO number two is my, I still have a marker on here from where I showed you it last time because I was working on the bottom ribbing of this. 
This is my Radvent cardigan by Amber O'Brien using my Cozy Posy Yarn Co. 2022 Solstice Advent. Did I say it all? I think I did. <gasps> and I love it! I finished the bottom hem and I got four inches of ribbing on this front band. I don't know what this is gonna look like to put over another sweater. Oh, but maybe it'll be okay. Okay, the sleeves are a little, the sleeves are a little bulky here, but we'll get, we'll get the picture. Again, this is not blocked yet. So let me take these progress keepers off. Sometimes I put them into the bath with my progress keepers. So um, it's not blocked yet, but look at it. Um, I love it so much. Modifications, I did exactly what I talked about last time. So there is no buttons on these. Instead of doing colors like one through 13 and then 14 through 25, I did one through 20. 20 is technically the middle color, that orange. Um, so my sleeves match, it is totally identical and I really, I really like it. I know last week I was like, I could have faded this differently, but I'm really, really happy with it. And then, what I did was instead of working just a little bit of ribbing here, I think as the pattern called for, I knit, I worked four inches to match the sleeve and then I worked four inches here to give it more of like a shawl cardigan. I don't button my cardigans. Um, I wear them open and I wanted something that had a little bit more coverage and I am so happy with it. I think it looks so sharp, even over another sweater and even unblocked. But all of the ends are woven in on this, which I'm really excited about. I'll show you my insides, <laughs> my insides. So you can see, I use the method from my friend Natalie of Nitty Natty, um, where she knits over her ends. And I just did it as I joined every new color in because I knew I usually actually don't dislike weaving in ends, but I knew I would enjoy this project a lot more if I could just do that as I went. And then the last few ends from the button band and the bottom band, I just wove in yesterday while I was, after I bound this up. So now this is going to go into a blocking bath right after those socks. And I am so excited. Um, it is knit side to side. So I think if it's going to grow, it's going to grow this way widthwise instead of lengthwise, which is less common than what I'm used to, right? I'm used to sweaters growing lengthwise. So I'm curious to see what it's going to look like. I hope I still love the fit of it. I don't think I'm going to stretch it much. I usually don't when I'm blocking things. I'm just going to block it and lay it flat. And I'm really, really excited about this one. Oh, oh, oh. And that is FO number two, and it is done in two weeks, which feels really impressive. It would have been done sooner, honestly, if I didn't do so much twisted rib flat, but I'm glad that I did for the look. I have one, technically two other FOs, but they're little and they're spinning. But I pulled out my wheel. You can't see it. I pulled out my... Hansen oh, e-spinner this week because Michael had noticed I hadn't been using it. My friend MC had also noticed this and we were talking about it and I noticed that my perfectionism was getting the best of me where I felt like I wasn't good at it yet. Um, I needed more practice. I bought a woolly winder so I shouldn't bother practicing on the regular wheel until I have it set up exactly as I wanted. And what was happening is I wasn't using it. I've also been spending a lot of time on my spindle. So I just wanted to be intentional about using my wheel. So what I did was pull it out with the original flyer. So there's no woolly winder here. And I said, that's fine. I'm just going to practice with this as is. Oh, what's happening here? This lead is stuck. Um, I said, I'm just going to practice with it as is, and 
work on some little Rolags that I had gotten as like a little gift from my Hikari handmade order I placed a while ago. I had not used Rolags yet on my wheel. I had only used them on my spindle and I loved them. And I still love them, but there was a learning curve on my wheel. Also, I recognize I'm learning to use my wheel in general, so there's a learning curve already. Um, and the yarn that I was using, the first Rolex I used was the one I liked least, which was kind of silly. Um, it almost, it's not a true tweed, but it, it's like mixed fibers. And I think it made it a little bit harder to draft the Rolex because some of the fibers were slippery and some were less so. So it was like not super smooth. I was also working on the long draw. All of these things are new to me. Um, all in all, I ended up chain plying it. So it is a three ply. And I was pleasantly surprised with like the consistency of the skein now that I three plied it. Let's see if you can see. Yeah. Uh, I, it's tiny. I don't even know. Maybe it's 10 grams, maybe 20, maybe somewhere between there. Um, but that's really cute. And I'm going to set it aside to maybe make, um, a Christmas ornament out of, I have those other two little, um, these little ones from my spindle that I, tr I practiced with. And I also have another one. This is the second one I did. Oh, my nails match. Um, I told Michael this reminded me of Jaws, the blue and navy and the red. Um, and this one actually felt way more consistent. I'm pretty sure this is a merino wool. Way more consistent, way more smooth. And I'm now laughing because looking at it after it's again been chain plied on my wheel, it doesn't look that different from this one. So chain plying, man, it really hides everything, which is pretty cool. I am still getting used to chain plying and finding a good amount of spin without too much uptake because I think sometimes when I have too much uptake, I can't actually pull the chain like in time and then I'm, I'm breaking the single or my singles didn't have enough spin. I think both of those things must might be true, but I'm going to commit to spinning a little bit more. And now that I have those practice, um, little roll lags done, I already know what is coming next on this wheel and I'm excited, but we'll talk about that later. So let's talk about what I've been working on since all of the projects that I was working on last time have been bound off. Okay, F, uh, whip, F -O, whip number one. This is gonna be number one because it's technically what I cast on first. Although I don't know if it will be my main focus or priority, but we'll see if it gets done first. So this is in a bag. Um, by Rose and Seams. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that. Oh. Okay, Rose and Seams, I will write it. And it's a cute little wintry bag. It has all little sayings about snow and then it's people ice skating. There's polar bears, there's penguins, seals, horse and carriage rides. It's super cute and it's fluffy. Like there's fluffy interfacing in here, which is new for me for bags. But I like it. It's still small enough and squishable. Um, so even though it's fluffy, it, it can be squished. It has a nice handle and a little hook here in case I need to hook it to something. And inside is the yarn you will recognize because I am working up a pair of socks with my leftovers from another pair of socks. And I'm working these up two at a time because I'm planning to go toe up and use as much of the yarn as I can. I think there's like 44 grams or something like that. And yeah, I'm trying to work as much as I can. 
without wasting yarn and also making sure that my socks are even. I have a mm, eucalyptus lemon tough woolens bar in here. One with my chapstick, which you know I need to put on now. Because I saw it. This is the older quarter bomb. That's what it used to look like. Now I think the new one is what I showed you. I have an undyed skein in here for toes, heels, and cuffs so I can maximize the length of these socks. And these socks are actually going to be for my dad. He loves socks, but I don't know if he loves hand-knit socks. He is like die hard. He has one pair of socks. He owes, owns probably 200 pairs. And he, I kid you not, has an entire drawer in his dresser. It used to be an Amar of just these socks. And they're like the white mid calf, like decently high socks that have the gold stripe around the top, like a golden red maybe. And he loves them. I mentioned it at socks to him and he was like, I don't know, wouldn't they be really warm? And I was like, Michael likes them. Like they are warm, but also they're temperature regulating and you don't have to wear them in the summer. So just wear them in the winter when you're like plowing and doing things. I don't know if he's gonna wear them, honestly, but if he doesn't wear them, that's okay. He can give them to Sophia or someone else or he can just keep them and not wear them because that's what you do with gifts. You let people do what they want with them. But I'm using my World Champ colorway and this was dyed up with Kent of Nitty Natty. And this is, these are, this is the leftovers from a pair of socks that I made for Michael. And I did not, I don't think I use contrasting anything for Michael's, which is why this is a little bit less than 50 grams, but we're going to make it work. Um, I don't, I don't know that he's going to love a super long leg, so I think it'll be okay. And I actually started these yesterday. I worked out blunt toe and then just put it on hold here and I have some super super miniature charms. I have a cannoli and a snow cookie, so the snow cookie will be when I've showed it to y'all. And then this cannoli is just so cute. It's got sparkles. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it. Oh yeah. Um, so that is ready just for the foot for stocking it round and round in the dark knitting. It's movie night tonight, so that is perfect. And I also got this toe done last night and then set up to be in the same spot. But then today while I was editing and doing some things, I got about 20 rows on the foot. So. We're already moving and grooving on this sock. I'm working from both ends of the skein, which is kind of annoying, but not the most annoying thing in the world. It will be worth it to have matching skeins, matching skeins, matching socks, and use up the entirety of this skein. I'm using my little snowflake stitch stoppers that were given to me as a gift. And these are gonna go back in the bag. For knitting tonight at the movies. That is whip number one. Now let's get to whip number two. This one I cast on just today and I'm already so obsessed with it. Um, this bag is a bag you've seen before and it had some other stuff in it. It actually had fiber that I was spinning in it but it feels wintry and Valentine's because all of these hearts and, and red things. So I decided I'm gonna use it as my last little hurrah from a Valentine-y project that I'm super excited about. And this is from A Finch's Nest. And in it, you will see a little baby project and four skeins of They Don't Know which is a friends inspired colorway. They don't know that we know that they know that we know. Um, but it's just called They Don't Know. And this is on my 420 base, which is a light DK, but it's an eight ply, so it plumps up so nicely. And I am using this for my newest design. It is my 
my newest design, the design I'm working on currently, although you're, it's not going to be the next design you see. This will be the next design you see, and then potentially one more really quick, and then I'm going to have one for March and for April. I need to decide what I'm doing with those, and then these pants will be next and they might be an older sibling aka a DK weight version of a, a pair of fingering weight pants that you've seen before. They may or may not have a flare. Also like look at my nails and this yarn. I'm not gonna lie I did paint my nails with this colorway in mind and you can't really see it's like a periwinkle grayish blue. Ooh, they look darker next to the yarn. But I'm really, really obsessed with this and I have a tough lens in here somewhere. Mm, wool sniffa. Which is this is from a this is an exclusive scent with a, a yarn shop. I have my little cupcake stitch stoppers on here. These I had these in the shop and I am not sure if they're sold out, I'm being honest, but I might have some more stitch stoppers coming to the shop very soon because I'm almost totally sold out. Y'all love those so much. So really excited about that. And here is the little bit that I have that I've worked on today. <gasps> Look at this yarn. I love it so much. Um, there's a provisional cast on. My goal is, one, I have a, a progress keeper from Wendy, a very warm stripes that will also be coming to the shop soon. And I threw on a little heart stitch marker that she sent me as a prototype for some things for Valentine's Day boxes. And it's so good and Valentine-y and I love it so much. Um, so that's that's what I'm that's what I'm doing right now. Um, my goal is after I finish recording this to join because it's ready to join. So I'm gonna put pick up the provisional cast on, pull the cast on out, and then do, just work one round to join this band. So it's like a little double brim, so that it's also ready for stocking it in the dark movie round and around knitting. And I am so so excited about this one. I think it's going to fly, fly off the needles, one, because it's DK, but also because I'm so excited. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Okay, one, two more whips. One more whip. I haven't worked on my Bosworth Melanated Boho Bay, at least not enough that I've like put a dent in it, so I'm not even going to show it to you. So my last whip is fiber that has been moved into... This wintry, a finch's nest bag. That might be Michael. I think it is. It's Michael. Um, and it is my Cherry Cherry Bobbin Spindle. And I am spinning on some fiber from a new wholesale, from a new supplier here in the States. And I am obsessed. I mean, you can see I, I just picked this up and started spinning it. I can't stop. Um, and I'm actually spinning with a Falkland, which I've never spun with before. It is a similar mic. I think it's 27 microns, which is similar to a BFL. So it's not as soft as a Merino or a fine Merino, but I think it's very wearable and very next to skin. I would not call this rough or scratchy at all. I'm loving loving how it's spinning up and I'm going to be playing around with this and some others in the dye pans this coming week. So that is my last and final spin whip for now but I think you're going to see more of that very soon. Let's talk about maybe what's coming up next. <music> What's coming up next, I already alluded to this a little bit, and I know I've talked about this before, but I am saying it here for accountability so you know what's coming next. I'm going to start spinning. At least, I would like to actually copy a little bit of what Andrea Mowry is doing. She's doing 15 minutes of spindle spinning in the morning, 
15 minutes of wheel spinning in the evenings or at least at some point throughout my day. I'm gonna try and commit to 15 minutes of wheel spinning a day. And I have finally officially prepped this Hello, uh, nope, 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 this Nest Fiber Studio. It's called Hello Sunshine. And it's this chartreuse slimy green, and this is a merino flax silk. And I took the giant braid and I separated it into two, two ounce. I wanna say braids, but this is what I was figuring out to make it evenly two ounces. So this is two ounces. This is two ounces and this is the next thing that is going on the wheel. Now that it's prepped, I feel like I can't wait to start spinning it and maybe that's just what I needed. I was having some nervousness and anxiousness about that, but I'm just gonna start and see how it goes. So that's what's coming next. And then I don't plan on casting on anything new. That's Michael, did you hear him? I don't plan on casting on anything new right now. However, there is a chance that a little quick speedy design hops onto my needles in the next week or so. But I'm not gonna talk too much about it. It's a little cropped sleeveless like sweater vest, boxy, drapey, fuzzy thing that I think I might want to get out in March or April potentially. It could be really nice in either month, I think, for like to throw over short sleeves or long sleeves or a blouse. Um, so we'll see. That could be coming next. And that is all that is in the plans for now. So let's talk a little bit about life stuff. So in case you're new here, uh, some people might ask, this is my quadrophenia that I made with my homespun house advent uh, in November. So you could go back to those sessions, like 25, 26, and check the making of that out if you want to see it. Come on. It's the last se section, so we're just going to talk about life stuff. I recorded our last podcast on Thursday. So we do have a few things that we've done between Thursday and now to talk about. Yeah, I guess. Okay. Well, they know Thursday that we were going to a comedy show. Yeah. And so on Thursday, we did that. We drove out and saw Nate Bergazzi at the Prudential Center in Newark. Mm -hmm. And he had a host who was really funny. Do you remember his name? No. I don't remember, like, any of the guys' names. There was a host who he, like, grew up it's with like on, the, on the New York scene. And then there were two guys from Tennessee. Um, I'm gonna say the one guy's name was Mike James. That sounds right, actually. And there's another man from Tennessee. Yeah, I think his name was Mike James because I was just thinking Mike Jones. Ah, uh, me too. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then the other guy was like J J B Webb or something like that. J D Webb, something like that. They were they were, I think they were all from Tennessee. They well, were they were from, from Tennessee. Tennessee. And then he had Gary Veter, who is not from Tennessee. Not from Tennessee. He's... Um, and they're friends from New York. Yeah. And then, whom we've seen Gary Veter a few times. Gary Veter usually opens shows for Sam Murrow. So we've seen him twice. Yes. And he's always funny. Um, and then there were two surprise guests. Oh, yeah. And it was, one was Nate Bargatze's dad, who is a magician. <laughs> that was so good. But he was also, like, he was cracking jokes. He was really funny. Um... Yeah, he did. He did good. Like it made me think. Like, of course, Nate is as funny as he is. If you grow up in a family like that, like, how could you not be? Yeah. Um, and then the other one was Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon. And like, out. I don't want to shit on Jimmy Fallon. He just doesn't. He's he's rusty. He doesn't do stand up all that much. He has people like write his jokes and stuff like that for him. Um, I didn't think he was bad. I didn't think he was bad. It just wasn't like. I don't know. I don't find Jimmy Fallon. I don't think I could have sat through 60 minutes of Jimmy Fallon. No, and that's not what I think of as, like, I don't think of Jimmy Fallon as that. Like, I think of his show as, like, skits and hosting and, like, little yeah. intros and things. And yeah, I yeah, think yeah. that's what he did. Mm -hmm. He didn't do, like, a full set. No, he did, like, 10, 15 minutes. And mm -hmm. That was 
good. Mm -hmm. And then it was just Nate, cool to see him do. It was cool, family, and and that they knew each other. Like it was just cool that yeah. he was supporting him. Um, this was Nate's first stadium show, and I mm -hmm. think everyone was really excited for that. If you haven't seen Nate Bargatze, this is his first stadium show. I'm assuming so. That's I why it was such a first stadium, stadium tour. Tour, tour. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Um, like if you haven't seen him, go watch him on Netflix or anywhere. Shut He's out. all over. Tennessee kid. He's so funny. He's awesome. Um, so that was really funny. And then we came home, and on Friday it snowed all day. I was stuck at home because you took my cart work, and I did a lot of work at home, and then. We did a lot of stuff on Friday. Um, we got our night we got night tables delivered, so we brought those up. They weren't assembled already, but we switched over our other ones. Mm -hmm. We cleaned the house. I assembled a bookcase to replace something that we had downstairs. Yep. So we did a lot. And then I played video games while she <laughs> assembled the bookcase. Being very supportive. <laughs> Yeah, and then Saturday, we were like, let's do nothing and watch movies and TV all day. That's what we did. Well, that's not true. We did yoga. We woke up, we did yoga, we went to get donuts and coffee, and then we ran, went to the grocery store, and then we watched movies all day. Yeah. We watched... We watched... Um, we, f we watched comedy. We so finished watching Stavros. Um... Yeah, Stavros is special. special fat rascal. And then we watched. And then we watched Dusty uh, Slay, Dusty Slay who is man. hilarious. If yeah. you have not seen Dusty Slay, go watch his special. Go watch his thirty minutes on the stand ups. The stand ups. I think so, season three. So funny. So we watched those comedy specials. Then we watched. Um, Self Reliance. Self Reliance. Which was like, I don't know, I thought it was, the way they made the trailer seem, it was like funny, but realistically, you watch the movie, and it's like got funny parts, but you kept saying it, and I was like, no, and by the end, I was like, I think that was the whole thing. You know, like, I was waiting for, I thought it was just supposed to be like a comedy. And I don't think it was so comedy. Like, it, it was, but like, yeah, it was like, you weren't sure if he was crazy the entire time. Yeah, like I did a lot of reality testing, not knowing what was, I'm sorry, I think I hit the table, like not knowing what was real and what was in his head. Yeah. Um, so we watched that, and then, did we watch something else? That day? Yeah. We watched a little Game of Thrones. We watched some Game of Thrones, we made pizza. Oh yeah. Lots of pizza in our oven, and then you played video games, and I... Hung out. Wolves. Started watching School Spear. Oh, I watched American Nightmare. Is that what it was called on Netflix? Wild docu series about um, there was this murder. This is would be such a fun segment. I'm sure the fans will love this. Me talking to you about the murder things that I watch. There was a murder. It should be a fun segment for them. Yeah, for them and you, also, <laughs> Michael. Um, there was a a robbery turned kidnapping of this woman and then the cops were like this is a hoax mm -hmm. the boyfriend was like oh they let me go but they kidnapped her and they were like yeah this is the exact plot of gone girl like kenny kenny was literally yeah. just telling me about this it was story. crazy and so then they were like this is a hoax they didn't take her seriously and now they're, they did a docuseries and was like this is what happened the person's been caught i was assaulted i was like Here's everything that happened, but the police missed all this stuff because they were dead set on this idea that they had of me, mm -hmm. which is just, don't get me started, because I feel like there were three crime junkie things, serial, like all these things we're watching that are like police had a preconceived notion. They just wanted to make things fit their story instead of figure out what actually happened. They were trying to build a case. Yes. So I watched that. It was very good. And then I started watching School Spirits, which is fine. It's like a cute murder mystery kind of show. It's okay. Um, and then Sunday, we woke up and watched more things. We watched... Mm -hmm. um, we watched... The Last Five Years. Yep. Which is sad. But so good. Jason Robert Brown. The, the guy, that's the other guy? 
Like that's the lead actor in that. You know his name? No, that's the the composer who oh. wrote the song. No, that's like, Jeremy Jordan is his name. Oh, I do know his name. I've never seen that guy before in anything. He's a Broadway star. Oh. So question mark off Broadway. Movie about five years of people just falling apart. Yeah, marriage. It's pretty sad. It's a music. It's based off. Of, it is a musical based off a of Broadway play. Um, so we watched that, and then we watched Pulp Fiction. Which neither of us had seen. I thought it was awesome. It was weird. I thought it was awesome. It wasn't bad. It was not what I thought it was going to be. It didn't, it it was didn't like, connect as smoothly as I thought it was going to, like some of Quentin Tarantino's other movies have. It, well, it was just kind of like, like all But it was together. kind of on purpose. Like the beginning yeah, said pulp is like a magazine. It's like pulp of a fruit or like a yeah. magazine or something. And it was like four chapters, basically. Three or four chapters. And a lot of movies are like that. Yeah, it was more, it was disjointed. It was interesting. It was fine. And then we watched Game of Thrones. Yeah, we for watched a long time. like three hours of Game of Thrones or something. It like was that. wonderful. Yeah, it was a great weekend. <laughs> I can't wait to do it again. One day, we will do it again. We will do it again. What do you mean one day? We will. I said one day, and then I'm saying no. I'm not saying it like that. I'm saying we'll do it more often. So. Oh. And then tonight we are going to see American Fiction. Meeting a couple friends, gonna grab a drink with them beforehand, and then go see that. Well, we're movie. gonna grab dinner. Yeah, we're eating. Well, <laughs> we're drinking. I'm not drinking. I'm drinking. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're gonna go watch a movie, and I have all of my knitting ready to go. Anything else, life wise, that we need to tell the people about? Mm, I got nothing. I got nothing either. Okay, you wanna sign off? Yeah. And say, I will see you all next time. See you back here in a week. Take care of each other and take care of yourselves. What? It was good. <laughs> okay, take care of each other.